Each and every transaction should satisfy the asset property. Sequence of operations with respect to read or write. So I will call all this series of operation as one single unit. That is what I will call it as a transaction. The transaction is in the state when it executes the final statement. So that is what I will call it as a partially committed state. Hello everyone, I welcome all of you to the yet another interesting session on transactions. My dear students, you, you will be thinking, am I talking about the transaction with respect to the DBMS? Yes, exactly. I'm speaking about the transaction which happens in the database. All right, so if you don't know anything about the transaction, I think you are in the right place to understand from the scratch till the end of the transaction. So guys, I welcome all of you to the beautiful session on transactions. So what do I have? in the session for all of you. Let's check that. So guys, basically I will be introducing you all to the concept of transaction. Along with that, I will also speak about the different states that we have in the transaction. So you all would have come across with the process states in the operating system, right? Even in the same way, I have the different states that with respect to the transaction. So yes, along with that, I will also discuss the asset properties. Each and every transaction should satisfy the asset property. So what exactly asset properties is all about? I will be discussing that. It's going to be one of the important point or important topic, which you should never forget with respect to the transaction. Along with that, two important things, uh, concurrency execution and serialability. So I will be speaking about this at the end of the session. So without wasting much of your time, let me get into the session. So in this, I will be explaining the first topic that I have with respect to the transaction. What is the definition for transaction? You need to observe transaction is a sequence of read and write operations. You need to understand sequence in the sense one by one. So it can be a read operation or it can be a write operation, which happens one by one. That is what you need to call. You need to understand here. So find transaction is a sequence of read and write operations on what? On data what we have stored in the database. That's what you need to remember here. So find these sequence of operations with respect to read or write. So I will call all this series of operation as one single unit. That is what I will call it as a transaction. That's what you need to remember here. So everything I will consider it as a one single unit. That's what you need to remember it as a transaction. So fine. What is that I need to remember with respect to the transaction? So here a beautiful point to be remember. It should be either be done entirely or not at all. There is nothing called partially done. So nothing you, you cannot consider that as a you know transaction at all. Say for example in one transaction. If you want to say that it is a transaction, you should finish it completely. Only then I will be saying that as a completed transaction. Otherwise, it is not at all considered. That is what you need to remember. So that is the second point. And moving forward, if it succeeds, the effect of the right operation persists. That is commit. If it fails, no effects of the right operation is persist. That's what you need to remember. If you are successful in that particular transaction, the effect will be saved. Commit in the sense saved. Otherwise, nothing will be saved. Sir, I have written you know, a lot of things. Only the last part is pending. Can I say that only the last part is not there till whatever I have done, it is there? No, it cannot be like that. If you are completing, it should be everything. It should be everything. Otherwise, nothing will be there. That is what you need to remember with respect to the transaction. So fine. So you got the basic idea about the transaction. Now let's understand the different states that I have with respect to the transaction. What exactly that I have? How many different states that I have? So guys, basically I have five different states in transaction and this is going to be very, very important with respect to your exam point of view. You can expect this question in your question paper. All right. So what is the first state that we have? Let me explain that with a you know, diagram. So guys, the first state that you have is a active state. So this is the beginning initial state of the transaction. That's what you need to remember. All right. The active state in the sense the initial state of the transaction stays in the state where while it is executing. So that is what I will call it as a active transaction state. So fine. What are the next uh, state that we have? This is the partially committed partially committed in the sense I have almost executed all the statements that I have in the 
transaction. Observe clearly. The transaction is in the state when it executes the final statement. So that is what I will call it as a partially committed state. So I have executed the final state, final statement. So that is what I will call it as a partially committed state. All right. So observe here. So once I am in the active state, that is what I will call it as an initial state. So then I will move to the partially committed. So in this partially committed, I have executed the final statement. So that state I will call it as a partially committed. Committed in the sense what uh, I have uh, saved. That is the state. That is the meaning of committed. But here partially committed. Final statement I have executed but not completely saved the transaction. That's what you need to remember. So fine. Failed transaction. What is the meaning of it? Failed state. So observe here. A transaction is in the state once the normal execution of the transaction cannot proceed. So that is what I will call it as a failed state. See, observe here, I am in the initial state, okay? From the initial state, that is active state, I will move to the failed state. Be due to some input output operations which is required, so which is not complete. So I will move the transaction to the failed state. So when, I, when the transaction comes to the failed state, observe, I cannot complete the transaction normally. So that is what you need to remember. So fine. Aborted. Aborted in the sense what? A transaction is said to be aborted when the transaction has rolled back. Rolled back in the sense, say for example, now I am working on some transaction. Half of the things I have done. Okay. But unfortunately, I will not be able to complete the transaction. So now that transaction will be treated as failed transaction. Once it is failed, I will move to the next process that is aborted. Aborted in the sense what? Now you have completed half of it, right? So that will be rolled back, rolled back in the sense, I will keep it to the previous changes. So before you start doing this, how the database was, I will change it to that particular state. So if you are doing that, that state, I will call it as the aborted state. So you are keeping the database unchanged. Previously, before you do this transaction, how it was, so like that I will make it. So that is what I will call it as a rolled back. So that's, all, that's what you need to remember with respect to the aborted. Moving forward to the next one, committed. Committed in the sense what? A transaction is in a committed state once it has been successfully executed and the database state is saved. So that's what you need to remember. So that's what I will call it as a committed. Whatever the changes that you have done, so that is saved. That's what you need to remember with respect to the committed state. This is that you know, five different states that we come across with respect to the transaction. Moving forward to the asset property. Any transaction that you take, each transaction should satisfy this asset property. Sir, what is this asset property? So A in the sense atomic. Atomic in the sense what? If you consider that transaction, I should not be able to divide that into sub transaction. That should be the last level. So that should be the last level of the transaction. That is what I will call as the atomic. Atomic in the sense what? That is a minute one. I cannot further divide that. So if I consider that transaction, I cannot divide that transaction into further any other transaction. That should be the point with respect to the atomic. So fine. Any transaction should also satisfy the atomic property. Moving forward, consistent. What is the meaning of consistent? Observe the data on all the system reflects on the same state. That is what I will call as a consistent. So listen to me carefully. Consistent in the sense what? The data on all the systems at that particular point of time should reflect same. Here, imagine I will withdraw 5000 in the ATM. So here it is showing minus 5000 balance. And there in the system, if I check my accounts, so there it is not showing 5, 000, minus 5000 balance. That should not happen. That is what you need to remember here. Isolated. Isolated in the sense what? I should be able to execute multiple transactions without any interference. That is what I will be calling it as a isolated. That is what I will be calling it as a isolated. That is what you need to remember. And when it comes to the durable, durable in the sense what? Even if there is any failure, whatever the changes that I have done to the transaction or to the data, that should be there. So that data, saved data should be there as it is, even if I come across with any failures. So that is what I will call it as a durable. All these properties 
I should have in the transaction that is what I will call it as a asset property. So this is what you need to remember. You can expect this for two marks. This is going to be one of the important topic with respect to the transactions. What's the next topic that I have? Concurrency execution. Concurrency in the sense you are executing at the same time parallelly. That's what I will call it as a concurrent execution. So guys, what is that you will remember when it comes to the concept of concurrent execution? My dear students, the concept of concurrent execution will save a lot of CPU time that is processor time and also disk management will happen properly. That's what you need to remember when it comes to the concurrent execution. At the same time, parallelly we are executing more than one task. That's what we call it as a concurrent execution. But when it comes to the serializability, what happens uh, when we are doing the concurrency uh, that might lead to some of the problems to the transaction. So just to avoid that, we have a concept called serializability. What is the meaning of serializability? See, in the name itself, it says that serial one by one, you are executing the transaction uh, one by one sequentially that is what we call it as a serializability. So how exactly it is happening? It performs the operation like this. Say for example, uh, there is a concept called lock. What is the meaning of lock? You are locking that particular resource. Say for example, the first transaction is happening. The rest of the transaction or rest of the process will be in waiting until the first one is completing its transaction. So once the first one is done, the second one will start its execution. One by one, you are executing the transaction. That is what I will call it as a serializability. This is what you need to re remember with respect to the serializability. So with this, I have come to an end of the concept called transaction. So happy learning. Thank you. Bye-bye. Wait for the next session, which is going to be very, very interesting in the database. Thank you.